A word like that, just hallelujah, which is just praising God and acknowledging that he's here. It's high praise makes a way for God to enter into your life. And there are seasons in our life that we're going through such a difficult time. We don't know how to pray. And all you could just say is something like this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if that's all you could say, he goes, that's all I needed. Just a, give me some space. Acknowledge me. It's so easy to acknowledge your pain, your hurt, your suffering, the difficulties you're going through because they're real. But the truth is, just as much as your problems are real, there's a God that created the whole earth, he created you, and he's real too. And that's why there's a scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, but, and don't lean on your own understanding. And what that means, don't try to figure everything out because there's some things you cannot figure out, but God has it all figured out. At the end of your wits, at the end of your money, at the end of everything you've tried, you run into a God that's infinite in wisdom, infinite in resources, infinite in power. He's almighty, all powerful, and he wants to help you. As, as I grow in the Lord, this is what's supposed to be happening. I'm supposed to become more like the Lord in my thinking, in my attitude, in my kindness, in my love, in my love especially. And this is, this is what ends up happening as you grow in the Lord. Your prayers are more for others than for yourself. It, it gets to a point that you want it more for them than they want it for themselves. And it's, it's difficult because there's things I want for you even as a pastor. And this is the problem. You don't want it as bad as I want it for you. And I'm not even God. And maybe today you could just say, Lord, build a greater desire in me to want you and want your things more than I want the world, more than I want the temptation, more than I want the money, more than I want the power, more than I want the fame. Come on, is there anybody right now, you've wanted those things that have left you empty, but if your desire can shift and you could say, God, Put a heart in me that desires you more than anything in the world. I'll guarantee you this. Everything that you desire, God will give you. You just have to shift to your passion. And that's what this is all about today and, and this weekend. Women, make sure you get there. And, 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 and I'll, the reason I'm going to say make sure you get there, there's been a lot of work put in to take care of you and make sure the event's as perfect as it can be. And I know because my daughter has been out 2 o'clock in the morning, 2, 12 o'clock, and every single night for like two weeks preparing for this event. And we've done everything we can to prepare this event for you. But the Holy Spirit told me something, and he goes, you guys have done a great job preparing, but we have been preparing too in heaven. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. There's going to be a banquet set up, not just in the physical realm. There's going to be a banquet set up in the spiritual realm. And on that table is every single thing that you need. The banquet's been set. The angels will be here. The Holy Spirit will be here. Come on. Jesus will be here. Your breakthrough will be here. Your miracles will be here. Wisdom will be here. Come on. Healing will be here. Freedom will be here. A new beginning will be here. A breakthrough thought is going to be here. Creativity is going to be here. Inventions will be here. The question is, will you be here and taste it? This is the issue. If you don't show, you won't taste it. There's a spiritual thing that's happening that's preparing us for the greatest move of God, the greatest miracles, the greatest days the church has ever seen.
come on, the greatest days you have ever seen. And God is setting up. This is a meeting where he's saying, women, come together because I have purpose for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define it for you. I'm going to empower you. And with my purpose, if you just say yes to it, every single thing you've ever desired will be attached to it. If we'll just live out God's purpose, you don't have to worry about anything else. Everything else is there. The restoration is there. The breakthrough is there. The healing is there. The money is there. The, come on. The peace is there. The fulfillment is there. The satisfaction is there. If we could just get our purpose right. Don't make life about you. Make life about pleasing him. And let, let, make life about God using you to touch people that are hurting and broken. And, and if you just say, God, use me, he'll use you. Are you guys ready for that? So ladies, sign up. There's only, I mean, it's only 50, 50 left because the, the other 20 have been taken by those that are gonna be sponsored and they'll be sponsored today. So there's like 20 left. I think there's five VIPs left. Um, lead night, you don't wanna miss that. I'm telling you, get in that room. Get in that room with leaders. You do not wanna, that's gonna be May 21st. Ladies, you're gonna have a whole weekend set to take you to the next level. This weekend will make history in your life. You'll never forget it. Come with a pen and paper because as God's speaking, write it down. So, so, so it doesn't matter what's going on. I already know where I'm headed. God gave me a prophetic word. I know where I'm going. Leaders, men, women, everybody here, church members, it's time to get to the next level. The only limit that we have is our thinking. And if we don't get higher thinking, we're going to stay in the same. Hope is not a strategy. You need higher thinking. So we're going to expose you to higher thinking all week long. Lead night, you do not want to miss it. There's a few VIP um, tickets left for that too. All right, let's pray. Father, in these next few moments, I'm asking you, Lord, to speak to us through your word. You know what everybody's going through today. And there's not a problem, not a situation that you're intimidated by. This is a moment of healing, breakthrough, victory, salvation. Why? Because you're here. And when faith is matched up with your power, there are no limits of what can happen in a room like today or a room like this weekend in our services, in our women's ministry, in our lead night. Big, big weekend. We've been preparing a lot. So I just thank you, Lord Jesus, and we pray. Amen. All right, you have a seat. I'm going to talk about, and this is, this is the title of the sermon, You Have to Be There. I remember when me and Lisa... The first day we met, we met because we were there. And you said, well, how'd you get there? I was invited to a little Bible study in Rialto. It was a real small house. I somehow got an invitation. And this is what I learned about life. When you get an invitation, go to church, you get an invitation to a Bible study, you get an invitation to do something for God, your part's real simple. Just say yes. Now, when you start saying yes, this is what's going to happen, and you continue saying yes to God's invitations, you're going to yes your way into your destiny. I didn't know exactly what I was saying yes to, but there was somebody also invited Lisa. And this would be the first time that Lisa would enter into a Bible study or church. Someone invited her, and Lisa said yes. My mom was teaching the, the little Bible sit in the house. I think there was maybe 10 of us in that home in a real super small living room. My mom was speaking. Lisa said yes. She walked in. I said yes. I walked in. I didn't know I was saying yes to my wife. I didn't know I was saying yes to a church. I didn't know I was saying yes to my five girls. I didn't know I was saying yes to my plan, destiny that God was giving me. And right now, understand, be careful that you're not knowing, saying no to what you should be saying yes to. Because I've learned this also, that when you say no to what you should say yes to, you're actually saying yes to what you shouldn't be saying yes to. It's not just, I know that was kind of complicated. But the idea, your no is a yes to something else. 
and your yes is a no to something else. You got to make sure, make up your mind. This stuff is real simple. When God's inviting you to a meeting, when God's inviting you to discipleship, and God's inviting you to pray, and God's inviting you to get in his word, your job is easy. Just say yes. But what's in it for me? God says, don't worry about it. I got a lot of things planned for you. Your job is just to say yes. You know what God says? I care more about you than you care about yourself. Just, just say yes. Come on, say yes and expect something. I talked to a young man this week. Interesting story. He was in my office, and this young man is a millionaire, and he told me a story on how he became a millionaire. He said he was in complete poverty. Him and his wife got a divorce. He was visiting his children with no money in his pocket, barely making it. And while he's driving, he sees a car on fire. He stops to help the young man get out of the fire and basically saves the young man's life. He could have drove by like everybody else, but he just stopped and he says, and, and maybe this is what his conscience was telling him, or maybe God was telling him, why don't you stop and help? And anytime you hear the voice of God, stop and help, stop and give, help somebody, understand that's not the devil, it's God. But when you say yes to that, you're saying yes to purpose, you're saying yes to destiny, you're saying yes to your next level. This weekend, you could say yes. He told me that he got a call, but they exchanged numbers a few days later, and he was invited to a gated community. He gets in the gated community. He drives up to the house. It's some beautiful mansion. They have a little breakfast together. Then they have a meeting. And he tells the young man that, that saved his son, you, you saved my son and you don't know what you did. My son's worth $25 million. On that table, he put $100,000 cash on the table. Two stacks of 50000 And then he put a little paper with a hook on it. And he says, you got a choice to make. You could take the 100000 or you could take the mystery paper with the hook on it. He had no money. He's desperate. So he he, he's moving towards the $100,000 and said, I'm taking that home. God's answered my prayer. This is a breakthrough time for me. But the wife of the man was behind and saying, no, 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 no. Take the paper. <laughs> Being peer pressured by mama, he goes ahead and picks the paper. And he says, do you know what you've chosen? He goes, no, I don't know what I've chosen. He goes, this is what you've chosen. I'm going to mentor you how to make money. He just happened to be a Jewish man that has generational wealth and secrets to success that were passed on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation to the next generation. He told me he saw a chart with names. Every single person's name in the family was written on this chart. And then at the end, it had their net worth. Every single person's name was, was, was chosen and their name meant something. So they just didn't name it because it was a cute name. They named it because they were naming their purpose. The kids that were just born, they were already choosing career paths for them. And they had hundreds of thousands of dollars set aside just for their education so they could expand their business. He told them this. What I want you to do is come at four o'clock every morning, and from four to eight, 
if you'll just be there, I'm going to train you. I'm going to show you how to make money out of thin air. And I'm going to make you a millionaire, but you got to show up. If you're one minute late, the meetings end. If you don't show up, the meetings end. If you're 30 seconds late, it's all over. This young man had to develop a habit of waking up early than he ever woke up. He gave him $100,000 for this. He met with that man for three months straight, from four to eight, from four to eight, 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And at the end of the three months, the man said, I've taught you everything. Your teachings are over. Don't tell anyone that I taught you this because this, these teachings are just for our family. All he needed to do was show up. And this is what's happening. We got to be careful that we're okay with our lack. We're okay with our ignorance. We're okay with our situation. And understand, God is saying, I'm calling you to a higher level so I can bless you at a higher level so you can be a greater blessing at a higher level. Come on. These meetings are super important. If you're talking yourself out of being there, you're talking yourself out of destiny. Let's look at a story in the Bible. Elisha had to be there to receive a double portion of Elijah's power. And you're saying, who's Elisha and who's Elijah? Elijah was a great prophet in the Bible that walked in great, great power. And he had a, a man he was discipling or mentoring and his name was Elisha. Understand this about leadership. No leader in this room will be a leader forever. You have a season to lead, and then in that season while you're leading, you're also equipping a successor. If you do not leave a successor, if you don't pass on your faith to the next generation, if you don't pass on your faith to your kids, I don't care how much personal success you've achieved, you are a failure. See, we don't think like Jews that think about inheritance because most of us didn't receive jack. The only inheritance we got was an addiction, depression, anxiety, the, come on, dysfunction. And that's the only inheritance we got. But there are people right now, even in this church, that we're breaking a generational curse. And we're not just thinking one generation. We're thinking multiple generations. And I got to get as equipped as I can because I got to overcome everything I'm facing so I can pass on something valuable to the next generation. Give God some praise. God is speaking to you to go to a higher level. But if you cannot overcome your own negative, weak thoughts, it's over. There's only 50, 50 spots left. Why well, can't come? Here you go. That I can't thought is going to stop you for the rest of your life. If you don't have faith, come on, for $100, what makes you think you can have faith for a great vision? 2 Corinthians 2 9, look what it says. When they, came, no, when they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. Now, what, now background is Elijah is walking so close to God, he got a prophetic word from God. See, and this is what was so great about really getting close to God. When you start getting close to God, you don't have to go to a fortune teller. You don't have to read your horoscope. You don't have to turn to witchcraft. 
Because when you get close to God, God begins to tell you what your future is. God's not trying to keep your future a secret. He's just saying, you never come to me. You watch more YouTube videos and Instagram. You're busy doing, talking to your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You have no time to, for me to reveal your future. That's called vision. When you start hearing from God, it changes your life because you're no longer guessing. You're living life with intention. I'm in San Bernardino, and I know this. God's already told me, I'll die in San Bernardino. So I don't have to worry about moving. I'm here. That's it. Are there any other cities? No, there's other cities that we're going to start churches in, but I'm only going to live in one city, not San Bernardino. And people say, San Bernardino, isn't that the so second poorest large city in the country? Why don't you go to, come on, to Orange County and start a church. There's a lot more money there. Uh, see, I'm not going to be blessed by, by being in Orange County. I'm going to be blessed by being in God's will. Is there anybody here that needs to find out God's will? Because God is saying, I'll bless you anywhere. I turn deserts into gardens. Are you still here? So he's, he's following, Elisha's following Elijah. Do you know why some of us can't, we don't like go to another level? Because your next level is going to receive, is going to be received through an impartation from someone that is at a higher level. You know why we can't go to the next level? We're not great followers. We're fans but we're not true disciples. See, when you're a fan, you go with fads. But when you're a disciple, you start realizing this is relationship. And I'm here, come on. There's no, come on, you gotta be a child of God. You gotta, come on, be a, come on. I'm part of this ministry. And since I'm part of this ministry, this is my family. I'm not just here for my breakthrough. I am here for my inheritance. Can we get guys ready for this? We have an inheritance in this church. Me and Lisa have been married for 33 years, and we got a great marriage. I told, I told someone the other day, and I, I really say this, marriage for me and Lisa is easy. And understand this, it's never been hard. Oh, no, pastor, don't say that. No, because when you do things right, come on, there's an inheritance. We got an anointing in this house, come on, to turn relationships around, turn families around. And God is saying, you got, come on, you got an inheritance from your family, from divorce, dysfunction in your house. And God is saying, I brought you here with a new family and a new inheritance. Come on, does anybody want some freedom in your life? some joy in your life. Say this, give me my inheritance. It's good. Let's look at this. We have an inheritance of faith in this house. Like, I'll believe for, I just believe it. Like, I'll believe it to the point I'm like angry at anything that tries to resist it. That's the kind of faith like, What? Are you questioning what God is saying? I don't think so. I, I hear people, well, let's see how it's going to work out. I'll stop and write in this section. We're not going to see how it's going to work out. We already know how it's going to work out. We got a word from God. Come on. Does anybody want that kind of faith that, come on, defeats worry, defeats anxiety? I'm not waking up at night all worried. I already know how it's going to turn out. I might be going through a storm right now, but I know this. I'm not going to stay in a storm. God always leads me to triumph. God always leads me to victory. I'm always going to a better place. Does anybody understand that your future is better than your present? I know I'm pretty passionate about this, but I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your future. I'm talking about your family. We're talking about your marriage. We're talking, well, come on, we're talking about your kids. And if you don't get it, you can't give it. If I were you, I'd be like a sponge. Give me my inheritance. <laughs> so now, Elisha, 
is following so closely. He's following so what? Because he's after something. Elisha is basically saying, I want what you have. I heard that you're leaving, and this is what happened. God gave Elijah a prophetic word that he was, he was not going to die and that he'd be taken up into heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah says it, and since he's an accurate prophet, there's not a person that doubts it. Elijah knows I don't have a lot of time with Elijah. I need to spend every waking moment with my father. I want you to get this. He had a physical father, but he also had a spiritual father that he was trying to get an inheritance, not from his physical father. He was trying to get a spiritual inheritance from his spiritual father. Understand this, only sons or daughters get inheritance, not friends or acquaintances. And that's why you want to become a son and daughter of the ministry so you qualify for some inheritance. Come on, give God some praise. This is your family. Stop acting like you're an orphan. When you have an orphan mentality, this is what happens. You never fit in anywhere, and you always go from one place to another place to another place to another place. And the reason is... That spirit won't allow you to have family. And what it does, it begins to point out things that are wrong with the family to excuse you leaving the family. Truth, there's no family that doesn't have issues. We all have issues, but we're still family. Come on, we're still family. We got an inheritance too that's coming. All these things that I have, we got breakthrough inheritance in this church. Come on, we go to cities and we're conquering cities for the glory of God. How many understand we got a breakthrough anointing in, this, in our church? Look, so now, Elisha is following so closely, Elijah finally says, what do you want? I mean, like everywhere I go, you're right there. I go to the bathroom, you're like right there. Could it be that you're not getting the growth that you need to get because you follow loosely and not closely? We have, we have, we have, I'm talking to church now, I'm talking about some people that think they're leaders. You'll never be a leader until you become a great follower. It's an inheritance passed on to you. We have Holy Wars 1, Holy Wars 2, Holy Wars 3. We're going to be launching Holy Wars 4. We got discipleship groups, which are small groups. We're training. There's a system here. And you're saying, ah, ah, one of these days, one of these days, and if you don't ever get with, with what God is doing in this house, you're following too far to get any inheritance. You got to stop saying to me, your church is awesome. You need to be saying, my church is awesome. Stop being scared of commitment. Stop saying, we'll see and start start talking definites. I'm going to be there at the conference. Vamos a ver. You're even bilingual in your your flakiness. Vamos a ver. We'll see. Merci, merci, French. You got to start speaking definite. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Are you going? Yes or no? I'm going. Say with me, I'm going. Until you say it, you'll never do it. When someone doesn't like commitment, they always leave a back door open. They even talk like this. If you're a lack of commitment person, this is what happens. You say stuff like this all the time. I'm just here for a season, just so you know. So don't think I'm going to be here for a while. This is all seasonal for me. I'm like a season. I'm like, I just flow. (laughs) Tell your wife that when you get married. 
We'll see how it goes. Now we see how it goes. It's for better, for worse, and worse, sickness and health, poverty or riches. I don't care. I'm going to be with Lisa to the day I breathe my last breath just as much as I am here in San Bernardino. I'm not going anywhere because God wants to bring some stability in your life. How can you be a great disciple maker when you're not even consistent? What people need nowadays is consistency in their lives. Mama walked out, dad walked out, husband walked out, everybody walked out, and now you're a Christian and you want to walk out too? I'm not going nowhere, so don't worry about that. If you don't see me, it's because you're not here. I'll be here. Come on, let's give God some praise. I don't even know what time it is right now, but it's good time. You have to be there. I'm, I'm telling you, you have to be there. So now, tell me, now Elijah, Elijah said, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. You know I'm going, right? He goes, yeah. And Elisha replied, this is so good. He knew what he wanted. A big part of actually seeing a vision come to pass seeing a miracle come to pass, seeing change in your life, is knowing what you want. Don't come to me and ask me for prayer and you don't even know what you want prayer for. I'm not going to agree with nothing. My job is to agree with you and we can say, okay, so what do you want prayer for? Just whatever you feel led. Lord, humble them right now. No, don't pray that. I don't want to. All, what we're saying is you don't go to McDonald's and make an order just saying whatever you want. Why would you treat your life that way? That means you need to think about your life a little bit more. We need to think about our lives a little bit more. We need to start thinking what do we want. What are you expecting? What are you attaching your faith to? You should be showing up to, to tonight. You should be showing up to an event. You should be showing up to women's, women's conference. You should be showing up to lead night expecting something. So what do you want, Elisha? Elisha? Elisha replied, please, please, let me inherit a double share or portion of your spirit and become your successor. I know what I want. That's why I've been following so closely. I don't want what you got. I want what you got times two. You know why? Because the next generation should do more than the previous generation. Jews understand this. Come on. Jews understand this. We don't. You know what Americans do? We start over every generation. We don't get nothing. No houses, no money, no skill, no career, no business. Hope you make it. Because we built nothing for you. We were so busy partying and getting drunk on the weekends and going to the casino. All your money is at the casino. That's why they got some nice buildings over there. That's your inheritance. Go over there. Maybe you could get lucky. That's all we got for you. Good luck, buddy. We don't expect much from you either because we... Our family, we're jacked up. We're alcoholics, we're drunks, we're gangbangers, we're, we're crazy, we're adulterers. That's who we are. Just so you know, that's who you are, okay? Okay? I know you're going to church now and you start to, you're starting to think you're better than us, but you're not better than us. Remember where you come from. You're from us. And God is saying, no, that was where you were from. But now I've adopted you into my family. And I'm a king. And you're a prince. And come on. And come on. You are the king. Come on. God is saying, I'm the king of kings. That's what I'm saying. I'm royalty. 
Does anybody understand that you serve the God that created the heavens and the earth? He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's saying, get your identity in me. Does anybody want it? Come on, does anybody want it? Does anybody want the inheritance? Come on, does anybody want it? Does anybody want, does anybody want the inheritance of leadership? Does anybody want the inheritance of success? Does anybody want the inheritance of casting out demons? Does anybody want the inheritance, inheritance of prophetic vision? Hey Amen, come on. You're called to be leaders of leaders because that's anointing that's in your house. Stop trying to connect with stuff that has nothing to, your, be, to do with your house. And that's the dangers of, the dangers of social media is, is, is this what happens. You, you keep looking for prophetic words. And the reason you keep looking for prophetic words, you're not listening to the prophetic word of your house. And there's still something missing. And you're thinking there's more. He goes, yes, you don't obey. You kind of obey. You want to continue being independent. Well, is it not a good word in the United States of America? No, you're supposed to be dependent on God. Come on, depend. Come on, you're supposed to be dependent on God, not independent. We're supposed to depend on each other. Come on, we're family. You're supposed to lean on me. I was going to sing the song, but I, already, I knew my tone was off already. I'll take you somewhere. You'd be like, oh, no, I didn't. just keep staying your lane, pastors. Preach. Don't start singing. Please, that's not your gift. Please, let me inherit a double portion and become your successor. Now, the reason he said double portion, because he knew about Jewish law. And Jewish law said this, that the, the firstborn son gets double inheritance. I just don't want inheritance. I want firstborn son inheritance. And you'll see later in scripture, when Elisha does leave, when Elisha does leave, he calls him father, father, and he got an inheritance. When Elisha left, look, 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 let's see, listen to this real quick, we're done. You have asked a difficult thing, let me, you're asking a big thing, bro. I see you. You got some vision. This is what we want. We want great vision, but we don't want great focus. Great endurance. Great persistence. You'll never have a great life when you're inconsistent. You guys got it? You've asked for a difficult thing, Elijah replied. But this is the deal. If you see me when I'm taken from you, when the whirlwind comes and you see me, if you're there, you have to be there, then you will get your double portion. Power. Just a, a minute before this conversation, Elijah and Elisha come up, up, up on on the Jordan River and Elijah takes off his coat and just puts it in the water and the water opens up and they start walking on dry land. That was because Elijah didn't want to take an extra walk around. He goes, we don't have to walk around. I'm anointed. I'm telling you, there's a whole nother level of supernatural that he wants our church to walk in. And God is saying, you got to start expecting. It's my word. I've given you an inheritance. It's my inheritance. Come on, Jesus is saying, I died and I gave you a, a testament, a new testament, a new inheritance. I'm giving it to you. Receive it. Let's end here. If you see me when I'm taken from you, you are there then you'll get your request. But if you're not there, then you won't. So if you want that, you have to learn how to follow real closely and not take your eye off the goal. You can't let people talk you out of your future. 
You can't keep changing your confession of faith to match up with your circumstances. You got to know what God is telling you. You got to keep showing up. You got to continue being persistent. Because what you're asking for is a difficult thing. You're asking for something that if God doesn't answer, you can't do it. But what God is saying, you do everything that you can, and I'll do what you can. But God is also saying, it's time to get your thinking way up. I'm not bringing you here to tease you. I'm bringing it here to empower you to go to a level that you've never seen in your life. Isn't that great? I want double what you got. I've never seen anybody like you, but I want to be like you, but double. And you know what happened? A world one came in. <laughs> they were walking. Elijah was right there with Elijah. They're walking. World one comes, separates them, and a chariot comes in and takes the fire chariot, comes in, takes Elijah to heaven. And when he goes to heaven, Elijah drops his mantle. Elijah, Elisha picks it up because he's saying I saw him when he left so there must be a double anointing on my life right now let's let's start using this he goes to the same Jordan River and he drops the mantle in and the water split. He starts walking on dry land. The same anointing that was on, on Elisha. Elijah is now on Elisha. And God is saying there's no limits. That's Old Testament. I died and resurrected from the dead to give you my Holy Spirit. Imagine what I want to do with you. Come on, it's time to get some excitement. Show up. You got to be there. Let's stand up. All right, we're going to dismiss in just a second. I know. I know you're hungry. <laughs> but how many are hungry more for the spirit that you say, ah, I'm hungry? There's two meetings. We're three meetings coming up, right? You got to be there to get it. If you don't, if you're not there, this is the worst part about it. You're going to be where you shouldn't be. And you're not going to get it for you and your family. Husbands. If your wife said, I don't know, you say, I do. You're going, baby. Where are we going to find the money? Don't worry about that. I got you covered, baby. I got some extra stash that you should use for Budweiser. Bud Light, actually. I don't do Bud Light no more. So, here it is. Husbands, be a leader. Your wife needs you. You should encourage your wife to be there, not be with you on this. I know, but I want her there. And the Lakers are playing. She's my Laker buddy. No, she needs to right now be in the house of God and it, just trust God. Holy Spirit will be with you with the Lakers. Okay? Okay? And ladies, don't allow the negative thoughts in your mind to tell you don't fit in with women. I don't know. That's not me. That, all these, but understand, they're just demonic thoughts, excuses. It's human reasoning that's getting you out of position. And as long as you keep giving into that, you'll always be out of position your whole life. And the worst thing about it, you won't even know it. You're going to be thinking, oh, I, I just do my thing. I just, I just roll with my, I, I'm not vibing right now, vibing. <laughs> yeah, you're vibing with the wrong side. And you know what happens? You start vibing on the wrong side, you start becoming weird. Because your language doesn't match with your house. You're talking a different language. You're like, where, where have you been? Who are you listening to on YouTube that making you talk like that? That's not our language. How many understand how that's how it works? Come on. And the devil becomes a self-fulfilling pride. I don't fit in. And the devil says, you don't. Get out of here. And, but you'll do that for the rest of your life. We're here to grow. And the most painful thing you'll ever do is change. Change. Nobody wants to change. We want to change our results, but we, want to, we don't want God to change us. Is anybody ready to change? 
Is anybody ready to go through some spiritual surgery? Might hurt a little bit, but at the end, you're going to be a new person. Come on. I brought you here to a safe place because I'm ready to do something. Now, we're going to end it with this. You got to be there. And it all, everything starts with an invitation. If you want a new life today, say, man, I've been doing it my way. Um, I've been involved in sin. I know it. No one needs to define sin for you. We all know this. We're all sinners. Now, heaven is not for people that have never sinned. Heaven is for a whole bunch of people that have sinned and been forgiven of their sins because they put their faith in Jesus that died for their sins. There's no such thing as karma. You're not going to come back as a rat and get another shot at it. It's not going to happen. After death, you stand before God to give an accountability for your life. The problem is every single one of us will fall short. And I'll tell you this, God loves you. And God loves sinners. And he was accused of not hanging around. He was accused of why he was always hanging around sinners. And Jesus said this, it's the sick that need a doctor. I'm with the sick because I'm a healer. You're judging them. I'm saving them. Come on. I don't care what you've done. I, I, I say this once in a while. I apologize for anybody that made themselves, made you feel like you're the worst sinner and they're so good and made you feel like you don't even fit into the church. I apologize for them, but they misrepresented Jesus because Jesus used to go out there, find the sinners, love them, heal them, save them, forgive them, set them free, heal them. Today's your day. I want you to be there in heaven one day. But how about starting a little heaven on earth right now? You start thinking differently. You start overcoming. Come on. You start having some peace from heaven, some joy from heaven, some thoughts of heaven. You start walking in the power of heaven on earth. Come on. I love it. The life you're looking for, you're not going to find in a Budweiser. You're not going to find in a Mode Modelo. You're not going to find in a Mary Jane. You're not going to find, you're not going to find it in a relationship. You're not going to find it in porn. You're gonna, because all that stuff leaves you empty in the end. That's your addiction that's speaking. But you could find it in Jesus and say, so what do I do with all this stuff, my baggage? You bring it. Jesus is the one that forgives you and he sets you free. You got to be willing to change. Come on. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want a new beginning today. I'm not sure if I die right now, I go to heaven, but I want to give my life to Jesus. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to start a new life. I want you to, I want to, or I'm a believer, I backslid. It's time for me to come back home. You have the guts to walk away. It's time to walk back. And there's open arms here. We love you. It's the greatest decision. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let your neighbor stop you. You're making a great decision right now. Give your life to Jesus. Receive eternal life. And you say, Pastor, I don't know if I have eternal life. Today's your day. Receive Jesus. Pastor, I walked away. Time to walk back. Got my love's here. Power's here. Man, I'm struggling with an addiction. Freedom is here. I'm depressed. Come on, joy is here. Come on, are you ready to make your exchange? If that's you, and you want prayer right now, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to get set free from an addiction, you want to get set free from depression, you need a new beginning right now, you're going through something that you can't overcome, and you need an intervention from God. You've tried everything, but there's still something missing. Give your life to Jesus. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. That's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I'm ready to surrender it all. I need a new beginning. One, two, raise your hands when I say three. Three, raise your hands all over the building. I see all those hands. I see all those hands. See that, see that, see that, see that, see that. Proud of you. Come on, I see all those hands over there. I see that hand. Come on, there's somebody else. Come on, right there, right there. Those that raise their hands, do me one favor. Way in the back. Come, come forward up here. I just want to pray with you. This is your first. Come forward real quick. R those that raise their hands, come up here. I'm just going to pray with you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're going to pray right now. We're going to talk to God. Hey, come on. The power of Elisha is here. Come on. The power that, that parts the sea is here. The power that raises the dead is here. The power to set you free is here. The power to love you is here. Your new beginning is here. Come on, church. Let's celebrate. Like, come on, let's celebrate. I just want to be near your heart. We'll do this. It takes a real man to do this. Come on. Proud of you. Proud of you. Come on, let's do this. Proud of you. 
Proud of you, baby. God bless you. Jesus, Love you. Let's do this. There is nothing like your love. Proud of you. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Love you. I'm going to tell you, this, this is the truth. We got some great people in this church. Not perfect, but great. And how I know this? Everywhere I go, I meet people from our church. And when I meet them, out, you know, I went to Chick-fil-A last night, I met somebody from our church. And to me, they're awesome. They're so kind, they're so loving, they're real. They don't have it all together, but they're real. And they could be your friend, and you could be their friend. This is what I do know, we need each other, right? And then we're going to have to have a lot of mercy with each other. You know, what gra- you know what grace means is that, hey, you know, they got some stuff they're working on. So do you. Give each other a break. Stop, let's stop being religious, acting like you're better than you're not. Like, and, and for you guys that have been Christians a long time, don't forget where you started. Don't forget that because it makes you a little weird if you don't. You'll never reach anybody if you forgot where you came from. Okay? So we're going to give our lives to Jesus. Are you ready to follow Jesus real closely? Are you ready, are, are you ready to follow Jesus as close as you can? So I'm all in now. And anything that competes with you following Jesus, proud of you. Love your glasses. So cute. Um, anything that competes with your relationship with the Lord, be willing to get rid of it. God will help you, though. So, man, I'm struggling with this. God says, give it to me. Ask me, I'll set you free. Who the sun sets free is free for real. Someone needs to get set free from an addiction today that would kill you if you didn't get set free today. Someone has a spirit of depression that, that's, that's tormenting you. We're gonna set you free today from that. Some of you right now have a spirit of rejection. Everywhere you go, you get rejected, rejected, rejected. And now you've put a wall up and you do everything you can to be rejected because now it's going to be on my terms. I'm going to do stuff to make you reject me. You're not even going to know it, but that's okay. It's on my terms and you've been stuck in a cycle. Every relationship ends in rejection. Some of you guys right now have been abused. And that means you're in a cycle. It don't matter who you hook up with, you end up getting abused. And you say, well, when is it going to stop? And God says it's going to stop today when you realize that's a spirit. It's a devil that's trying to destroy your life. A lot of, maybe some of you have been having nightmares and God's going to set you free. You've been sleepless nights. God's going to set you free. This is the beginning. I feel like there's an anointing that's entered this house today for the weekend. It's already coming. It's already flowing. The Spirit of God. Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus? Join holy warriors. Get baptized. Follow through. We're going to pray with you. Repeat after me. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I need you to save me, forgive me, set me free from all addiction, bad habits, tormenting thoughts, depression, anxiety, rejection, abuse, doubt. Set me free, Lord. I believe that today you set me free. Save me. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I am now forgiven a new person. And I am a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. And one more thing, Lord. I command every spirit of the devil, of darkness, of fear, to leave now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Fill them with your spirit, Father. Fill them with your fire. Stay right here. We want to pray with you. If you need prayer for anything, please come this way. You might be going through a time of your life and you need some difficult time. Come up here. We'll agree with you. The power to set you free is here. 